Welcome to the Mama Truth Show, where soulful mamas embrace the whole truth of the messiness and magic of motherhood. Check us out at mamatruthshow.com. Here's your host, Amy Ehlers, the Wake Up Call Coach. Happy Mama Truth Monday, mamas. It's Amy Ehlers here, the Wake Up Call Coach, and we're going to get juicy today. We're going to get your erotic energy flowing. I'm so excited for this call. It's really honestly um, something for me personally that I am working on right now. And so I really wanted to bring an absolute expert of the mostest to our call today to talk about really waking up your erotic energy. So I brought on Amy Jo Goddard, who has guided thousands of people towards the wholeness and fulfillment that they want sexually and in other aspects of their lives. She earned her master's degree in human sexuality education from New York University and has worked in the field for over 20 years, teaching classes and offering keynotes that help people connect the dots around sexuality and money expand their creativity, grow their confidence, and learn to be in bigger in their relationships, in their business, in the world. She's a TEDx speaker, and she's the author of Lesbian Sex Secrets for Men, yes please, and her latest book, which is Woman on Fire, Nine Elements to Wake Up Your Erotic Energy, Personal Power, and Sexual Intelligence. And she also teaches an intensive nine-month program called Firewoman, which is based on that book. So you can find out more about her at amyjogoddard.com, and you can find out more about her, woman, her Firewoman course at mamatruthshow.com forward slash fire. So with that, Amy Jo, thank you so much for being here with us today. I'm so, I'm excited, so to excited to have a conversation with you. I, I love what you're doing. Oh, I love what you're doing. And you know, before we started recording, Amy Jo and I were talking about mamas and about motherhood and about how for so many of us, and I'm really including myself in this as always, it's the Mama Truth Show. So I lay down the truth, right? But when I became a mom nine and a half years ago, almost 10 years ago now, I know that I felt like when I woke up that mother archetype within me and really embraced that feeling of nurturing and cuddling my little babies and suddenly my, my boobs and my vagina were about babies <laughs> instead of about sexual pleasure, it almost felt like as I welcomed that archetype, I, I released the archetype of having like hot, fiery sex in my life. And I know that I want that back. And I know that so many of you mamas want that back. So I'm so excited for our conversation today because I know this is like your specialty. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've had a lot of mothers do my work. Yeah. And the thing, there's a couple things I hear a lot from them, but one of the key things is how much they feel like their sexuality becomes invisibilized when they, it's like, I'm a mom and like, never mind that all the things that led to being a mom and motherhood are super sexual. They're super important parts of, of her sexuality. And yet all of a sudden, oh, you don't really get to be a sexual person anymore. We don't see that part of you. That part even becomes taboo. We don't want to hear about moms and sex. Right. You know, and, um, and so I think there, there's a lot of searching of like, well, who, who do I get to be as a sexual being? Do I still get to have that? And then, of course, there's all the practical things of like, I'm tired. Right. <laughs> and, you know, and I don't have enough <laughs> going on in my life with that for many. So, yeah. Know. Some challenges there. Yeah. I'm curious what it's been for you, Amy. Yeah. Well, it is, it is really challenging. I mean, I felt like, you know, like I said, when I stepped over that threshold, it, it, it I've had a hard time circling back around and integrating and really coming forth as this new integrated woman. That's this very wild, juicy sexual being and a really responsible, nurturing, loving mom. For me, that integration really honestly hasn't quite happened yet. And it's a struggle for me. And, and like you said, there's kind of the identity pieces and all of that confusion around that. And then, and, and especially raising girls, like I want to be a good model for that. And because we, you know, sexualize our girls so young in this culture, it's like, how do I do this in a way that's a healthy modeling for my girls as well? So there's that identity, that confusion around that. 
And then there's also just the tactical things of like, I'm freaking tired. I'm running this big business. I have this big calling. You know, I, I, you know, I'm, I fortunately, like I adore my husband. I think he's the best person I've ever met. And he just is, I, I love him more every single day. So our partnership is really strong. We are a team. We co-parent really well, all of that. But as far as the fire element, it's like, where did that go? I don't, where's the place for that? Where's the time and the space for that? Mm-hmm. You know? Yep. That's real. Yeah, that's real. And I think that no matter where people are at in their lives, whether they have children, whether they have a really busy career or both, (laughs) uh, you know, you name it, whatever is on your plate, you're caring for aging parents, you know, there's all these ways in which we are pulled. Um, And I think particularly as we get older and there's sort of more things happening kind of on both ends of the spectrum in our families, um, you know, it is one of the biggest challenges of, well, how do I prioritize sexuality? Like I want it to be important. I really believe in my heart it's important. And and we're going to have another Netflix night, you know, or whatever. I know. (laughs) Um, We're going to have a glass of wine and pass out in front of the TV. (laughs) Right, right. And and we all know that place. And so, you know, our lives are busy. We're overscheduled and and under-resourced in general. So, um, you know, and, sexuality isn't going to make itself the the priority. I mean, right. we, we really have to decide that we're going to put conscious energy into it. It's certainly not going to happen by itself. And I hear that from parents and definitely from new parents a lot. Um, yeah. Gosh, it's just fallen to the bottom of the priority list, totally. you know, or sometimes I hear things like, it feels like the last chore of the day. Right. And I'm tired of my chores and I just want to sleep, you know. Yeah. And I feel like, oh, like that's just, that's heart wrenching to me when I hear that Yeah. because, you know, certainly I'm sure your partner doesn't want to f- feel like they're a chore or connecting really? with them sexually as a chore. And, and I really think that, that we don't want to feel that way about our sexuality and, but it, it does start to just, as things pile on, feel like, oh, it's this other thing I have to make time for. And so I think we have to shift our approach to that and make it something, make sure that it's A, something that's nourishing us um, and that we want to give time to um, so that then we will, because you do, you know, you prioritize what you spend your time and your money on. And, and um, yeah, if you well, want it to happen, know that that's you, what has to happen. <laughs> you have, well, it feels like, you know, I know that you have these nine elements And one of the elements is desire. And I'm curious about that because when it feels like the desire for, you know, taking care of our kids and getting everything done in a day and all that busyness of life. So it's like our desire is to like check off the boxes, make sure the lunches are made, make sure the kids shoes are there. Do we get diapers? Okay. What's happening with dinner? Like all of those things, it can be just so hard to even get in tune with our desire. So I'd love for you to share a little bit about the desire element and how we can get back in touch with that. Yeah. I mean, it's the thing that more women struggle with than anything else. I mean, I hear struggles around desire all the time. A lot of it it can be, uh, I used to have desire and it went away and I don't know what happened, whether that's because of a baby or because of something else. Right. Uh, Aging can impact how, how that goes for people. Yeah. Um, but I don't think we need to be slaves to that. And I think a lot of times we feel like we are like, oh, mm. it's just the hormones. And it's just my body now. Right. Um, sometimes, I think a lot of times women really haven't had the opportunity or the permission to figure out what it is they really want. Mm. Um, we live in a culture where we see all the time modeled for us in movies in books in just the way sex is talked about a very male model of sexuality. Yeah, and it doesn't really include us. It doesn't really include um, a woman's perspective. And again, I'm talking in in generalities. There's always exceptions, and you know, so I will just you know, preface this with that. But I think you know we see it as a very linear thing, mm. um, and all the images are you know it's like they're they're going to see each other. They're going to have this spontaneous desire. <laughs> oh my God, I want you. Yeah, next thing you know. <laughs> They're in bed. <laughs> right. And, and just straight to penetration. Right. Straight right. to penetration. Everything's Nothing else. You know, maybe you see a quick kiss. <laughs> and then, of course, they have mind-blowing mutual orgasms at the same exact time. And then everybody's happy. And they roll over and go to sleep or whatever. Totally. It's so you true. Know, we see it all the time. And so even though we can laugh about it and think, yeah, that's ridiculous. Yeah. 
we can't really assume that it doesn't affect us, that we see it over and over. And I hear it from women all the time. They're comparing themselves to that. And they're like, well, desire doesn't happen that way for me. Yeah. You know, I don't, I don't just feel that for my husband. It's like, yeah, because a lot of our desire is responsive desire. It's not spontaneous mm. um, where we're going to respond to something. And so if what we're responding to is, you know, oh my God, we finally got the kids to bed. There's a dirty diaper mess we've got to clean up. There's a, you know, there's a train wreck in the living room with the toys. There's a, you know, the dishes haven't been done. If that's what we're responding to, not sexy, you know? So true. And so, you know, I mean, and sometimes, you know, I've heard from women, they're like, you know, the sexiest thing is when my husband does all the dishes <laughs> and, the kitchen, and then I'm like, yeah, I'm on, it's on. So that, you know, it, it's a simple example, but that's really true. Like sometimes it's like those acts of service are what's hot, feeling yeah. cared for, feeling seen in terms of our needs. Yeah. Um, and anything that can lessen the harriedness um, is going to help our desire. Yeah. So, um, so I think that's, that's one piece that's important to say. And then another piece is, is that energy creates energy. Right. And so if we want to feel more desire energy, if we want to feel more like pleasure in our bodies and, you know, ecstasy in our sex lives, then we've got to be nourishing that energy and generating it. And there are lots of ways to do that. Uh, I always encourage my clients to start a sexual practice. Mm. Um, and I think about sexual practice the way a lot of people think of spiritual practices. Mm. Right. I'm sure a lot of the women in. Yeah, in for sure tribe have, you know, yoga that they do, or, you know, you're finding a way to take some time, right. To meditate, to pray, to read the good book, to do the yoga, to whatever the thing is to walk in the woods here and there. Um, and so a sexual practice is similar and it doesn't have to take a lot of time. It can be something simple you do for yourself. Mm. Um, and I kind of play games with myself. Like I make little rules. Like, um, I love, I love the feeling of a breeze on my skin. That is totally, like it just, it gives me chills all over my body. It feels so good. And so I have this rule that if I'm outside, if I'm walking or I'm on the phone or I'm listening to something or whatever, that I stop when, when the wind blows, you know, mm. when there's like this beautiful breeze and I just really feel it for a minute. Mm. And so I think sometimes we make it complicated, like it, everything has to take so much time and it can be really the simple things like that. I think as, as busy moms, like you need to be feeling pleasure each day and you need to be feeling like your body is yours and you're getting to have a sensual experience in your body apart from your children, which can also be super sensual and beautiful. Um, and, and so finding ways to really nourish that on a regular basis is going to create more desire to have more of that pleasure energy. And I think what happens is we go from busy, 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 overscheduled, running around, doing all the things. Oh my God. Okay. And then we just want to turn it on in the bedroom. And that's, that's yeah. not a setup for that. That's not going right. to happen. Right. So I just want to dig in a little bit more around the sexual practice. I'm in, <clears throat> I'm intrigued by this idea. So when you say that, it sounds like you're talking about finding little things that bring you pleasure and, and really bringing in the context, like framing it and claiming it mm -hmm. as a sexual practice. Like to, mm -hmm. Because it's like I, like I get the, the pleasure and I, and I feel like, you know, for me personally, I have so much pleasure in my life. I'm like cuddling with my, my three-year-old is like one of the deepest pleasures of my life. But like that pleasure then trying to make it a, a set part of my sexual practice wouldn't go together for me. Right. 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 So it's like really, I think we need separations. Right? Right? <laughs> we need separations, which is good. So it's like finding those things that are pleasurable that we can then put through the lens of, Oh, this is part of my sexuality. Is that, mm -hmm. am I getting it right? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Um, I'll give you a couple examples of okay, practices great. that I really like. I've had, I mean, I've had women come up with all kinds of things over the years. Yeah. And what I encourage people to do is, you know, sexuality is very vast. It is not one thing. Yeah. And so whatever people are kind of in the most either struggle around or the thing they're wanting to deepen or connect to more in their sexuality to make a practice around that thing. So if you're wanting to be in your body more, then do something that's a physical practice. Maybe it's a naked dance practice. You know, um, I work from home. One of the things I found to be really helpful as someone that works from home is actually 
making a ritual that is an end to my work day. And like, this is the beginning of my rest of my day, you know, my personal time. So like a dance practice where I put on a couple of my favorite songs you know, and dance naked or not, whatever, however you want to do it, um, or put on something sexy and fun, grab your boa out of the closet, you know, whatever. I mean, just to make it fun and have, be, get physical in your body. Some people will have an actual like masturbation or self-love practice. They'll do that on a, on a daily or semi-daily basis. Um, some people will choose things like, um, like if they're really trying to have like work on their like self-love and connection to self, self-intimacy. They might do some kind of practices in the mirror, um, really loving themselves, you know, playing, um, laughing, you know, eye gazing. I mean, there's a lot of different ways you could do that. Um, and can I lead you through one of my favorite ones? It's yes, please. Yes. Because it's that fast. Yeah. Um, I do have a meditation practice and I keep an altar. Another great thing is to have an altar or beautiful things that represent your sexuality. Nobody else even needs to know what it is. Like you can just be like, these are pictures I like, you know, or these are mm, special objects. Love that. Like having a place that you go for that and altars are beautiful for that. And they're just so fun to make because I mean, there's no rules in making an altar. You make it a space that's sacred and beautiful for you. Mm. So, um, so this, one of my clients named this the two minute tingle. So what I do is I start at the top of my head and I just, you can all do it with me. Do it with me if you want. You know. So for yeah, those I, of you listening on audio, she's just taking her ha so, hands. Yeah. So running your, your hands down the back of your neck and really feeling your skin, like with intention, not just quick, like, you know, and then coming back and coming down the front of your face, your ears, you know, your, your jaw, your neck and coming down the front of your body, like not missing any part and just, mm. just, Hi, body. Hello. Like feeling the skin, feeling the veins, feeling the bones. You know, if there's a place that's sore, like, oh, I'm going to kind of like rub my, my upper arms or something or, you know, rub your butt. Oh, butt, butt rub feels really good. Um, you know, I reach around, I get as much of my back as I can. It feels so good. Uh, kind of bring the energy in the spine mm. I mean, all the way down the legs I love to get the bottoms of the feet because I'm pretty sure I have a clitoris on the bottoms of the feet. <laughs> <laughs> so get all Extra the good clitoris. parts no fair I want one <laughs> <laughs> are they giving them out at the store <laughs> I don't know how I got that it's great but but really and just like coming back to the places where you're like oh that needs a little more love or attention and and but really mm. that took like just a minute or two mm. notice anything different in your body yeah, I feel tingling a lot of places. I feel aliveness. I feel energy. I feel more embodied. I feel more grounded. I feel like, oh, there's more than just like my head. Right. <laughs> you know, it's right. like, oh, there's like this whole body here and she likes to be touched. And yep. yeah, yeah, beautiful. I love yeah. that. I mean, and there's a lot, you know, you can, I mean, that's the quick version. If you want to add, if you're working on more body love, you could add gratitude to each body part as you touch it, you know, love thank, that. You, thank you eyes. Thank you hands for all you do for me and all you carry and you know, whatever yeah. you can, you can add to it. So I really, I really like that one because it's so it's quick. It's simple. It's a way of like, I'm connecting to my body. Mm -hmm. I'm like grounding. I like to do it in the morning. Um, I've had clients who set an alarm for like 11 a.m. when they're like kind of getting really focused on the computer and they know they need to like make sure they're being in their bodies. And then the, the two minute tingle alarm goes off and they're like, okay, pause, Love you know, that. and go back. I mean, you could do it as many times as you want over the day, but that's a really simple way to just be like, I'm connecting for me, you know? Yeah. Um, another one I really love is falling asleep, cupping my own genitals at night, you know, mm -hmm. or just doing that a little bit before I go to sleep. Mm. Um, just as a way to just connect, you know, you can even put a, a hand on your heart, hand on your genitals. It feels really nice. You kind of cup right into the hand. Um, you know, so it kind of just depends what people want to work on and connect on. Yeah. But there's lots of things you can do, but think of it like you would think of a spiritual practice. It's a way that you're showing up for your sexuality on a regular basis. I love that. So mama's listening, take on this homework assignment really bringing okay. in your, 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 an inspiring field trip, right? So it's like that, that bringing that into your daily practice. And I, I love that Amy Jo. That's so powerful. Um, I know that one of the other 
things, and I think this is so true for moms. One of the other, you know, in your book, you talk about the nine different elements. And another one of them is about permission. Mm-hmm. And I know for mamas, my gosh, we need so much of that. <laughs> Will you talk about that a little bit for us and how we can mm-hmm. give ourselves more permission? I feel like if we were really writing a job description for me, it's permission giver for all things sexual. Yeah, you know? right? Yeah. Um, bec- I feel like that's so much of what I do in my work. Mm. And um, just because people just need it. I mean, not yeah. for me, they just need it in general. And ultimately it's about learning to give ourselves permission, like mm. permission to be who you really are as a sexual person to like the things that you really do like, to not like the things you don't like. A lot of times we feel like we are supposed to like certain things. And so Mm -hmm. we kind of force ourselves to engage in things that maybe aren't what we really want. Mm. Um, And to really explore and discover um, the sexuality that really is authentic for us and isn't that ver- you know, that glossy, over-sexualized version we see in the culture yeah. that doesn't include us, where everything is just leading, you know, it's all about getting to intercourse. And like, what do we call all the stuff before intercourse? What's that word? Everybody. Okay. Foreplay. Yeah. You know, in my first book, I wrote, you know, a chapter that's called foreplay. It's all play. You know, like uh-huh. how did how, somehow all the things that you know, are a lot of the things that tend to get women off um, and tend to be important for our pleasure get relegated to this like, well, that's the pre-game, you know, that's wow. not the real thing. I think that that's actually a very sexist concept. Mm. <laughs> um, Never thought about that before. That's, wow. Yeah. No. I mean, I, it's like so discounting what women need. Yep. Wow. And then we wonder why we're like avoiding sex because it's like sex then becomes oh my gosh the kids are asleep we're going to be tired in 20 minutes and so we've got to do it quick well if the only thing that we're really focused on is intercourse then we're going to have intercourse and we're probably going to have it too fast where my body's not really ready and it's not going to feel very good and then that's not really that's like a setup for making me avoid it in the future because i didn't have a fun time yeah and i think that really is happening for a lot of women um they're not getting their needs met but they don't know what the alternatives are. It's like, well, what could it look like? Because right. we don't have that permission um, to really explore or to say, I'd like to have sex without intercourse. Let's do some other things. Let's see right. what that's like. Um, and this is not to say there's anything wrong with intercourse. Believe right. I, I think it's great. There's yeah. nothing wrong with it. <laughs> um, but there are other things. And this framework of sex, I think, really shortchanges women. And it shortchanges a busy mom. <laughs> yeah. Well, and so do you have any tips for the moms out there that maybe they're engaging in a way that really doesn't turn them on, or they have certain things that would turn them on, but they're feeling shy about telling their partner about those things? Like, do you have any tips of how to engage in those conversations in a way that will make things better versus make things worse or make the guy feel like a failure if it's a guy or their, their lover feel like a failure or the woman in their lives, like whatever, you know, things, um, partners, whatever their partnership look like. I think a lot of times um, moms especially are afraid because, you know, our bodies have changed. If you've given birth vaginally, your vagina has changed tremendously during that. And maybe something that felt good before doesn't feel good anymore, but you don't want to make your partner feel bad. So then you just don't say anything. Yeah. Yeah. And that's terrible because you shouldn't be doing something over and over that doesn't feel good. And then that's going to feel bad for your partner if they find out they've been working so hard at this thing that you're like, yeah, I don't like it. Right. So that doesn't feel good for anybody. So I think first of all, really acknowledging, okay, this doesn't serve anyone for me to be quiet about it. Right. Um, And I think, I think actually what you just said is a very good in into the conversation Mm. saying what we're so afraid of hurting feelings that actually sometimes we don't see the most obvious thing is saying the thing that's true is what will help us have the conversation. So saying, I'm really acknowledging that my body has changed a lot. And I think that my responses in sex are changing. Mm. I really want to explore this, you know, and like do it in a, like we need to be inviting, not in a, like you're doing it wrong or right. in a punitive. There's, there's something that's so horrible here, but right. in a, like invite your partner to explore it. I mean, I'm 46 years old. You know, my 46 year old body is not, I don't have children, but it's not the body it was at 25. Right. Totally. Or 35 even. Yeah. And 
So I'm curious about my body and how it's changing and how my responses are changing. And certainly going through a pregnancy, going through a vaginal delivery, you're going to have things that are going to shift. Right. And so let's be curious about this new body. Let's be yeah. curious about what sex can be now. Um, and so one of the things that I love to encourage people to do is have a sex lab. Be like, honey, the kids are going to be at the grandparents next weekend. I want to have a sex lab. We're, gonna, we're going to, we're going to, discover and explore <laughs> each other's bodies and I want to explore what new things can happen in this body of mine <laughs> post child because it's very juicy and there's lots happening here yeah um you know and then to spend time really you know like testing things out you know well do you like to be stroked more like this or do you like when I touch you like this yeah you know or there's like the one to ten game you know on a scale of one to ten I'm gonna try different things on your body and you're gonna you're gonna rate them for me I mean make it a game make it fun mm. get so worried that we're gonna hurt feelings whereas if we just invite our partner to play with us right play yeah. is another of the elements like invite them to play yeah invite them to discover and be curious and you know and it's helpful when you have time when you're not going to be interrupted to do that right where you feel like you have that and so try to find a time when you can do that and then the things that they're doing that you really like make sure you give lots of positive re <laughs> right i love that thing you know again later did i mention how much i loved when you did that you know yeah. like give that positive reinforcement um and i think sometimes we come up with like clever language or things we call it you know maybe there's like a name you come up with for the move and you're like hey how about that move right <laughs> we just have to flirt with each other more and with our own bodies more and i think we get so serious about sex because it yeah. can feel really heavy when it's right. and it's not going well yeah and sometimes really it's just you just have to open the door to the conversation um and even of just saying, you know, I just wrapped up a couples course and one of the assignments was you're going to talk about sex once a month. You're going to have a check-in. Your sex life is important. And yeah. so you're both going to take responsibility for, hey, let's have our monthly check-in. How's sex going? What are you liking? What are you wanting more of? Great. What's working for you? It's not complicated. I mean, but we make it complicated because we don't have role models for it. And, you know, we all come by that honestly. We don't live in a culture, you know, imagine if all those movies actually showed us real negotiations, <laughs> you know, <Right>? getting their <laughs> needs met. Wow, you know, that would be great. But we don't live in that world. So we don't have the role models. So I do understand why it can feel scary, but we make it more complicated than it has to be. And I love that idea of having like the monthly appointment where you're just checking in about it and having that container that you've created together of like, this is important to us. This is important to our marriage or our relationship or our co-parent, you know, whatever structure it takes. But having that container where you know, oh, the third Saturday of every month is a date night and we check in about how things are going for us sexually and what's feeling good and what's not feeling good and all of that you know, it's why I feel like therapy and coaching and all of these things work. And, you know, just like having a personal trainer at the gym is exactly. like because of that accountability and that rhythm that you can get into, it's like, oh, I can rest knowing that this is not going to fall off the plate. Yep. Yeah. And I mean, I think a couple of important things about that is one is it sets the tone of we talk about sex here. Yeah. You know, we're not going to stay in our quiet, isolated bubbles or in our shame about it or in our, you know, whatever it is that's going on, our fears. Um, and another thing is that it does, it, it does that work of making it the priority, right? It brings yeah. it back to the prior, the top of the priority list. And third, which I think is so important to say to parents is it makes your coupleness a priority. Yeah. And so often I see uh, couples lose that when they have kids. It's like everything becomes about the kids mm -hmm. and they really lose that, that focus or just we're still going to make time for ourselves because it's important for us to have that connection with each other. And so it really prioritizes that, which wow. is going to make you better parents. The more you're nourished sure. there, it's going to make you such better parents. Yeah. <laughs> When I know that you have this program coming up and I would love Firewoman, right? Um, and I would love for you to talk a little bit about that because I'm sure that there's some mamas that are listening right now that would love to go deeper in this exploration with you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, I think it takes a lot of time 
um, when we've when we've built up a lot of patterns that aren't helpful to our sexuality, that don't nourish us um, sexually, and or if we've just struggled with it and we've not really been able to break through, which is true for many women, mothers or not, um, having having a period of time where you really devote to like, I'm really going to work on you know, making this the priority, having that, that sisterhood around me to go through a process together um, and having, having guidance for something that, again, most of us don't have a personal trainer for. Right. <laughs> you know, most right. Need. So yeah, I mean, Fire Woman is based on the nine elements in Woman on Fire. And so we go through an element a month. And uh, so it's virtual. We have women signing up from all over the world. We've had someone sign up from Australia the other day and um, yeah, several different countries already for this, this upcoming group. And, um, and then we come together in a live event later in the fall. Um, but we work on an element each month. And so that, because I think a lot of times people are like, I know I need a lot of work around sexual empowerment, but I just, I don't even know where to begin. I right. it feels like this overwhelming big bubble of stuff. And that's why I broke it down into these elements because these are the conversations I have with women over and over. Um, and so there's all these different inroads. And, you know, so we start, you know, we start with voice. We, you know, we talk about desire. We talk about the body. We talk about play. We talk about what it means to be at home in ourselves. And we yeah. talk about that fire and how to really juice up our energy and have it reproduce itself so that we have more sexual energy for ourselves, more energy as parents and in all the other things that we're doing. So um, it's really a beautiful program. And I, yeah, I would love to have some of your mamas come do it. Please yeah, that's work awesome. with us this year. I love it. So you can check that out at mamatruthshow.com forward slash fire, mamatruthshow.com forward slash fire. And you'll see all the details about that program with Amy Jo and really that exploration of nine months of making yourself a priority, making your sensuality and sexuality and erotic energy a priority. I, I, I'm so glad that you're doing this work, Amy Jo. I just oh, thank you. It is. So thank you. Yeah. And I think, you know, it's nine months because it's, it, it's your own birth. That's it's right. Thinking about it as like, what is my birth as a sexual being? And, you know, um, yeah, it, it's so rich, uh, when women come together and, and work on it with each other because yeah. we've all got our stories that are really tender and, um, and, and that we relate to in each other. We see mirrors in each other. So I absolutely love the work and I invite you. I invite Yay. you to come play with us. Awesome. So the last question, it's something that I, um, I usually ask the moms that come on the show about what's messy and what's magical about motherhood. But for you, Amy Jo, since you don't have two-legged creatures in your life, little human beings running around, tell us what's messy and what's magical in your life right now, just in general. What's messy and what's magical? Oh, I love it. Messy is um, home. Uh, I have been on the road for 18 months. I was touring for wow. my book. I didn't have a home for the first, for the only time in my life. I thought, well, I'm going to try this. And then I was really ready to have a home and I've moved into a home that I, I can't stay in. It's a toxic environment. So, oh, no. so I have to move again. So that's what's oh, messy right now, but yeah. that's okay. I know that that's only, be, you know, that there's something even more beautiful and expansive waiting. I thought this was it. It's not. Yeah. So it's, it's there. So, um, and what is magical? Oh my gosh. Um, several magical things. I think, I think even though the, I've realized that the space I'm in isn't right for me, it has been magical creating the space because I love creating the juicy beauty. Yeah. Yeah. Art around me. I am, I, I really revel in creating space. Mm. Um, and, and I think what's magical is this, yeah, this event we're planning in the fall, it's going to be at a place called the fire garden. It couldn't be more kismet. <laughs> oh it's my got gosh. like fire sculptures all over it. it it's, <sighs> it's lit up at night. It's <sighs> super magical. And so my team and I are just like chomping at the bit. We're so excited. We're so in our creative energy around awesome. all that we're going to be able to create fire women at the fire garden. So I love it. Really awesome. Oh my gosh. That. That's so great. Yeah. So you have to come. Oh yes. Oh my gosh. That sounds amazing. We'll talk for sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <That> sounds <good. laughs> Awesome. Okay. Well, mamas with that, I hope that you're taking some of these juicy little homework assignments and experiments with you from our call today. Again, you can check out more about Firewoman at mamatruthshow.com 
forward slash fire. And until next week, it's Amy Ehlers signing off. Keep embracing the messiness and the magic of motherhood. Bye-bye, everyone. Fuck. <laughs>